Okay, thanks for your introduction. Um, uh, I would like to first acknowledge my co-authors, uh, Izzat al Skaj, who is my senior professor, PhD student, who is uh, actually the one who did all the work. But he cannot be here today because of these issues, potentially back into the US. So uh, I'm presenting it, you got me today. Uh, if you like the work today, uh, please call him and offer him a job interview. He's looking for a job soon. If you don't like the talk today, remember me, I'm the one who gave the talk. And um, uh, Tom Javelin, his uh, postdoc who worked on this project, and he's currently at Google. And then, uh, uh, then uh, Milonjicic did uh, at HP. He has been instrumental in terms of the real use cases and operating system changes uh, that we need to consider for uh, moving forward. So uh, the problem that we're trying to attack here is a fairly simple uh, problem in the general universe of uh, uh, subtype poly uh, polymorphism. We're attacking. Uh, the problem of not being able to shear an object across processes when we have virtual table approach to implement single dispatch uh, in known uh, set met methods such as C++ or the C Sharp or Java. So the, just a very, very simple uh, background to make sure that we, uh, you know, we're all on the same page. Um, you know, we're talking about a simple C++ uh, in, uh, example here where there's a class A and a, 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 a descendant class B ex that extends class A. So uh, we have two virtual functions declared in class A, uh, bar and bas, and then uh, two virtual functions in uh, class B, which is bas and quotes. So we want to make sure that we create the uh, virtual table correctly so that it's a simple dispatch that uh, uh, if someone calls a, uh, in, uh, an object is in uh, class A, it calls bar, it will go into A's bar, and then uh, if another object that is in the extended object and calls bar, it will go into a separate bar, but then uh, if you, uh, uh, if you uh, have a, a different uh, function such as uh, bas, they would, uh, actually bar, it would, uh, uh, the bar will go to the, the previous one, but the bass will go to the separate ones. Um, real reason why we developed this system is because we have been building uh, quite a few uh, inference-based uh, you know, the software workflows, and we have been having trouble sharing uh, system objects across processes. And uh, so this shows a typical usage of these uh, what we call the persistent memory objects. We want to keep the objects in their point based form and we want to be able to engage them, disengage them in different processes so that uh, they can handle all the virtual functions, um, you know, going from one process to another process. So, um, the problem that, uh, that we, uh, we, we currently have in our compiler and the runtime systems is that uh, when a uh, uh, creating process creates a, uh, you know, a, uh, a heap and want to share that heap with uh, another process, uh, we're going to you know, essentially virtual table uh, you know, installed in that process. But then as soon as we share that object and um, uh, make the object visible to another process, the problem is that the other process will have a different collection of virtual functions. So the compiler will generate a different layout of virtual tables, and the, the virtual table will not be in the same place. So unfortunately, the virtual table pointer is stored in the object. So uh, when the uh, other process tries to call the virtual function, uh, you will use the, uh, the address stored in that object, and then go into an incorrect place for the other function. And it turns out that this is a fairly, uh, you know, uh, per pervasive problem in the field. And um, uh, the particular library that we use for most of the development is Boost Library. And if you go to the Boost Library website, it will tell you that, uh, you know, uh, if you use, uh, you know, the, uh, if you want to share the objects, you will not be able to use subtype, uh, you know, the uh, polymorphism, and uh, this doesn't work. So it will require extensive compiler changes and so on, which is what I'm going to present today. So uh, there are two approaches that we can take to solve this problem. The first one is virtual table uh, uh, duplication. But, uh, the idea of virtual table duplication is that 
because since we uh, don't have a uh, consistent place where we can find virtual tables, then uh, when we actually uh, put an object into a shear region, we also create a, uh, a prescribed location, uh, which is essentially in the metadata area of the shear region, and we create a duplicated virtual table just for the uh, classes of objects in the shear region. So now we don't touch other objects, but uh, you know whatever is in the shear region, uh, we will create that uh, duplicated uh, ta uh, ta ta uh, virtual table. So um, you know when the uh, the other uh, process. So let's say when we created these two processes, we will create uh, the virtual table lookup. And keep in mind that these virtual tables in different processes will be located in different uh, you know, uh, locations. So let's say we have two regions that we want to share uh, between reg uh, the, the creator and the user. So uh, we will uh, create a duplicated uh, virtual table in that prescribed uh, you know, the prescribed uh, 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 area, and uh, we populate the duplicated virtual table for the first process using the uh, information that we have on the first process. And then, uh, when the second uh, process uh, starts, uh, we will actually uh, uh, create the uh, shear region. But in the mapping process, we will also use the uh, information to go to its own virtual table and copy the right virtual table contents into the, uh, into the second process so that uh, the second process will be able to dispatch to the correct virtual table. And as you would uh, notice by now, uh, this process make the object creation more expensive. And so would, uh, put, uh, make the mapping uh, the virtual uh, re uh, region mapping a little bit more expensive. So um, these are the changes that we had to make, and we made the changes to the compiler in the uh, LVM compiler, and um, uh, uh, made the changes mostly to the uh, clan uh, part of the LVM compiler, and then uh, we modified the region management library mapping remapping functions to make it work. The second uh, approach is that uh, instead of making duplications, we can change the semantic of the, uh, the virtual table information a little bit in what we put into the objects. So conceptually, it's a little bit simpler than the duplication approach. So um, you know, instead of putting a pointer to the virtual table in the object, we put a hash value. So that hash value is going to be a, you know, the, the identification of you know, what the virtual table uh, entry should uh, be used in uh, dispatching the, uh, all the virtual functions for that particular class. And then uh, during runtime, when a function is called, we add that function's hash into the total hash. And then we access essentially a key value store to, uh, to identify the particular uh, virtual function pointer that should be used to call the function. So this makes the dispatch process a little bit more expensive. And um, as we would uh, see, you know, because of the, you know, the, uh, the number of things that, uh, you know, depending on the number of functions that we need to dispatch, if we get a very large number of this, uh, you know, virtual functions we need to dispatch, this process will, will kind of you know, scale in terms of the time that we need to dispatch each function. So the compiler transformation of this is actually um, turned out to be more, a lot more complicated than the duplication approach. So even though it's a conceptually a much simpler uh, approach, when it comes to implementation, it turned out to be quite a bit more complicated. So we need to actually uh, to, uh, change the, uh, the uh, um, constructor so that the, the constructor will properly generate the hash value into the object uh, you know, the, for, uh, for, for store to identify the virtual table entries. And then we change the virtual functions so that the, the virtual functions will actually do the hashing generation of the function hash value to the table lookup. And then we take the original virtual function bodies and uh, we generate the friend functions so that these things can become part, can be generated into global functions and will be placed into the global table and uh, we generate the appropriate uh, you know, stored hash values into the global table 
and then uh, when the, uh, the virtual function is really called, we can have a correct hashing into a global table. So uh, the semantic has changed quite a bit in this particular implementation. But um, uh, overall, the interface is maintained so that we maintain the original uh, virtual function semantic you know, what, uh, as far as the uh, users are concerned. So uh, we actually ended up having to recompile a lot more code uh, you know, the, in order for this to work. We actually need to you know, the, the, the compile the code that declares and defines the client classes. And this turned out to be more pervasive and I'll come back and comment on this a little bit when we deal with the real applications. So here is a comparison. I'm not going to go through the details of the comparison, but this is an important table for anyone who wants to implement this approach, you know, or uh, will come up with a different approach to these two. So you know, what these are all the you know experience that we gather when we come, when they come to the practical implementation and use of these methods in the field. So here are some quick results. Um, you know, as we would expect. The duplication approach will make the construction process more expensive. Here we show the construction, a, uh, you know, the, uh, the construction for an empty uh, you know, constructor. So uh, this is just the very basic you know, invocation of that constructor at runtime. The takeaway is uh, the duplication approach adds about uh, you know, somewhere around 80 nanoseconds, 80 nanoseconds to the con C++ construction process. And uh, for empty construction, this makes the, pro uh, you know, the, uh, the construction about three to 10 times longer. However, for real constructors, uh, you will add 80 nanoseconds, which tend to be probably about uh, you know, two times of a typical construction, uh, you know, construction time. And um, um, you know, as we vary the different parameters, um, if we actually add more polymorphic types, or uh, you know we will, uh, or uh, if we add increase the number of regions shared, then uh, you know we will s uh, see the construction time going up slightly because of the lookup of the uh, of the uh, uh, the duplicate virtual table or the bench uh, red table, and you can look at the paper for more details. And as we would also expect, if we use the uh, you know, if we look at the dynamic dispatch time. Um, you know, for uh, you know, during the, uh, the execution of the application, the um, hash table approach, uh, the hashing approach will be more expensive for the dispatch because we do more of the hash lookup during the uh, dispatch time. So uh, and, uh, it adds about eight nanoseconds or so to each dispatch. Unfortunately, the dispatch is a whole lot more common in real applications than the construction. So uh, you would expect that for real applications, the, uh, you know, the, um, the performance of the duplication approach probably will be better than the hash table approach and, um, you know, the, for most of the applications that we see today. So here is a real application um, that we, uh, you know, we took from Apache, and this is an XML conversion uh, software for different, uh, you know, for various, uh, you know, the output formats. And we see that the original code uh, spans, the red is the serialization, deserialization, parsing time, construction of objects, reconstruction of objects. And so, as you can see, as the XML file grows bigger and bigger, the, uh, the serialization, deserialization time becomes dominant. So uh, the second approach, uh, bar for each size is the, the duplication approach. So with the duplication approach, the construction time, um, you know, uh, uh, increase a little bit, but the dispatch time remains the same, and we get rid of the entire uh, virtual serialization overhead because all the objects stay in the, uh, you know, in their in-memory form. So um, you know, for this application, um, you know, it's exactly what I described. The uh, object construction is not as important as the dispatch, so that's why the uh, you know the uh, du duplication approach worked uh, faster than the hashing approach. And in this particular case, the amount of code we had to recompile to uh, to make each approach work is much less in the duplication approach compared to the hashing approach. So uh, you know, this is a quick summary. You know, uh, you know, we want to be able to uh, to begin uh, to share in-memory object across 
uh, various uh, you know, uh, situations. The most important uh, use case that we're looking at is the upcoming non-volatile memory generation. And uh, we are already seeing a lot of applications that want to use Keep the uh, you know keep the inference uh, database and so on in memory so that uh, we don't have to load model and uh, unload model and so on uh, during the computation and um, you know to the solutions are, uh, that we have is virtual table duplication and hash based dynamic dispatch both have been implemented in Clan and uh, we you know we will be releasing that into the Apache community and then uh, the major application speed up. That, that we are seeing is that for the Apache application, we're seeing between three and five times speed up uh, when we construct, uh, when we process large XML files. And we are also seeing similar speed ups uh, when we uh, work with HP Labs on some of their uh, the machine applications, we are seeing similar level of speed ups you know, as we go. So thank you very much.